Accepting the stone as both an apology and a token of appreciation, Jay Hyun approached the blue-tinged entrance gate, gently placing his hand upon it to gauge the dungeon's rank. Revealed to be E, confident in his ability to tackle it solo, Jay Hyun received a final word of caution from Park Sungji, advising him to use the warp stone in case of danger. With a nod and a promise to return safely, Jay Hyun stepped forward, ready to embark on his dungeon exploration. As soon as our character's foot entered the dungeon, the system seemed to change again. Everything turned purple, a dark shade, because the system explained to him this theme that places his special space. It welcomed him to Helheim, the land of the dead. Besides, since our hero was in the dungeon, Yu Sung Gyun thought, can he really handle it? She recalled his request to be allowed into one of their low-level dungeons, and also that he wanted to go there alone. She understood that this location was a very small rank. But for a novice raider, clearing it alone was almost impossible. The protagonist's character might have an ability, a unique ability, but he was still green. What she thought was that Jae Hyun was well aware of this and still wanted to enter the dungeon alone. She was very interested in his plan. But at that moment, a certain girl entered the office and said that they had completed her assignment. At the same time, they provided the profile of our main character. All of the employees knew that it was rare for the chairman to hire someone personally. Since she had already found out what Hyung's specialty was, Yu Sung Yoon was surprised that our character wanted to choose a martial arts class, even though he could use such great magic. But still, something upset her even more. She couldn't believe it because the propensity for magic arts was 97. This surprised her immensely. After a few minutes, she called her security guard and told him to tell Hyung that they would need to meet as soon as he came out of the dungeon because she wanted to personally test his abilities. We're back to our poor old character who was transported to the land of the dead, thrown out like some kind of garbage right in the middle of the cemetery. He fell quite hard, but he still didn't understand what was going on. The only thing he saw was that a skeleton was aiming at him, which wounded his cheek. At the same time, our protagonist noticed that most likely there was a paralyzing poison at the end of the arrow, so he would have to work hard to defeat all the monsters that started to get up from their graves. They were all hostile towards him. He understood that even he could go crazy, but in fact, although he was very enthusiastic, he continued to catch arrows with his hands. At the same time, we can see Eugene, who put her face right on the pillow. She said that she would definitely kill our hero if he caught her eye. Metal was well aware that she was easily lost on the street and still left her. No wonder he agreed so easily to go to a lecture. Did someone really want to make fun of her? She doesn't understand him at all. Five times he said that he hated going to crowded places, but calmly agreed to attend lectures. Yu Jiang knew that the man had always accompanied her, but now he had left her and disappeared somewhere, which meant that he had chosen a magic class after all, since he kept saying that he would become a martial arts class traitor. After all, if he has a reason to change direction, then it should be sharp enough to give up all his efforts. And there is no new explanation. Betty B. J. Hyung is an incredibly sensible guy. It's always difficult for him to make a decision. Even in a diner, he spends 10 minutes choosing food. But in one morning, Hyung became a completely different person. She started texting him again that she would like to hear an explanation about why he ran away from her. It was at this moment that our main protagonist was not up to the message, most likely because of the monsters. He felt an incredibly powerful aura. There were four planes in front of him, one skeleton of an archer and also a drawer. He thought that he would be able to break through them, but he was lucky because he had brought along a cheap load of skilled one, which allowed him to activate a spell with more power. We understand that Helheim in Norse mythology is one of the nine worlds, the world of the dead. It is this world that is ruled by Loki's daughter, Hel. The dungeon was created in the image of seven worlds, except for Midgard, as well as Asgard. Niflheim is the world of eternal ice and darkness. Muspelheim is the world of fire. Jotunheim is the world of giants. Alfheim is the world of elves. But Svartalfheim is the world of dark elves. Vanaheim is the world of Vanir, and also the coldest place. The deepest place of Niflheim is Helheim, 
This place is definitely not for beginners, because the undead are terrifying, and even without holy power, it is better to avoid direct collisions. But it's not so bad because it is in this world that he can test his new ability. Because the victim is not considered only a healing skill, in a battle against the undead, it becomes a formidable weapon that hits the area called the Light's Judgment. As soon as he deflected the arrow that was flying at him, as well as counterattacking his opponent, he realized that it was not necessary to rely on weapons alone, because at the same time, he activated the Court of Light for the first time. Although he did not have experience as a mage, he still gained experience and also understood how to use weapons. It was impossible to let out the chance that was given. He could easily handle his current level as well. He was very happy until the moment his staff broke. He knew that he was definitely finished because how did magicians fight really like him, trying to deflect every blow with his staff magic? He realized that he shouldn't have said earlier that he would gain experience because he had lost his weapon, but the result would still not change because he could still use his abilities. If he used the light source again, then all the monsters in the area were destroyed. His body began to recover. He knew that he was slightly confessing because if it wasn't for the new level, then everything might have ended badly. Is it really because this skill was S rank? After all, it is not enough to register it in an empty card because the magician's trick, it is without it that you should not count on blind luck. So at the same time, he went ahead, although I understand that this is the whole situation out of the ordinary. But should he really use the stone now? As he thought about it, goosebumps appeared on his body. He began to feel the sinister energy approaching, and he knew that if he didn't move, he would definitely die. So the only correct thing to do was to make his body start to listen to him, because first, he had to find traces. But the only thing he felt was a shadow behind him. Nightshade appeared. It changed its status to danger. He was asked to leave the dungeons. At the same time, he tried to get out his inventory while taking out that stone, but the boss was faster. He threw our protagonist. His life points changed. His status to danger, too. He was asked to immediately use the restoring effects of his own items because there was nothing left but to fight. Because the stone, as he couldn't say for sure, he was ready to accept death from this boss. But he noticed that it stopped. It was stopped by a girl who had two horns. She said that you cannot touch the guest that she herself brought. She greeted, child of the fate of the sworn enemy. Jay Hywin wondered, of course, what kind of woman was in front of him. Was this all her doing? But then he said that he thought a great warrior would appear in front of her who would kill him. But he turned out to be just a boy. The body was ordinary, even though the mana is good. It doesn't help to challenge the gods. So why did Loki choose him in the first place? But as he thought about it, he realized that he was losing consciousness. He had lost too much blood, but the woman in front of him was still picking at his throat with her fingernail. He thought, after all, will it really end at this moment? After all, will I not be able to carry out all my plans? Will I not be able to take revenge on my father and become a magician? His dreams were bound to come true. He had to hold on. Think of something. At that moment, the girl said that she liked the spark in his eyes, but he was too weak. The end was near. He should have gained his strength much faster. She grabbed him by the throat and started choking him, told him that if it didn't work out and that hell happened again, she would be the first to kill him. Of course, Jay Hewan couldn't understand what was going on, but the girl kept saying that he was too important to them, so she would give him a chance to become stronger. She told him to expand his strength and also destroy the monster that was standing in front of him. That's when he would get a special gift from her. But she also said that his time was too short. At this point, he received a new task, which was called the Ordeal of Hell. She told him to crush his enemy in two months. The reward will be a gift from Hell herself, but the penalty for failure? She asked him to remember all her words, because she will definitely keep her promise. She wished him good luck while saying goodbye to him, calling him the child that Nornier chose. It was at this moment that a certain woman started to reach out to him again. He had already seen her, but this time 
Her words were a little clearer. At the same time, he found himself at the entrance of the dungeon. The wound had healed at all. But who was this woman who was in front of him? She clearly didn't look like a person, but the quest was still valid. He knew from the title that it was probably a goddess, but still, the wording wasn't clear. And why was he called a sworn enemy? Was that what he had heard when he received the Nornier system? Why exactly did he go back in time? What the hell was going on around him? What did she want? But what he did know was that he needed to level up. Because if Hell's words were true, then if he didn't make it, she would definitely finish him off. He knew that crushing that monster would definitely not be easy. But the situation in which it was frankly shitty, because the problem begins even at the preparation stage. Because at that time, it is not even capable of fighting like Mac, and it still does not have a low-level spell. Our hero understood that in order to advance further, we needed to know the base six. As soon as he opened his phone, he noticed a message saying that Chairman Yu Sung Yoon wanted to meet him. Was he ready to see her tomorrow? Jae Hyun thought it was just in time because he only agreed to the contract if he couldn't fulfill one more request. The next day, as soon as he came to the Lotus Guild, he noticed that they probably got in touch first because they saw his profile, namely 97 Magic Predisposition. Even if you search the whole world, there might be a couple of people with such an indicator. But in the past, he chose a class of martial arts that clearly did not suit him because of his indecisive nature. Everyone around only discussed in their own way, and magic was openly despised. Such a situation was obvious, but this time, the moment he was ready, he met Yu Sung Yoon in the same room. She said she was waiting for him. Our protagonist immediately said that he was happy to see Yu Sung Yoon, and she was also happy to see Jae Hyun. She immediately asked him about the contract because her offer was very tempting, but he also knew that it was true, because he would not only be given a cash allowance, but also equipment of a good class, in unlimited quantity. In case of loss of property, no penalties will even be provided, and raid treasures will be distributed, depending on his contribution to the common cause. Everything was in his favor. Such an offer was a raid of A rank and above. So at this point, it seems that before signing, he would like to voice one more condition. As soon as Yu Sung Yoon asked to voice it, he also said that it hadn't even been a month since he changed his battle class to magic class. So it was certainly difficult for him to handle magic. So the only thing he wanted was for Yu Sung Yoon to personally teach him the first rule of survival as a raider. It was necessary to play the best card at the moment when it could get the maximum effect. The guard also understood that he was facing a difficult guy because he felt it even at their first meeting. Even though the chairman is a master of the Lotus Guild, as well as a raider of the highest rank, oh, there are very few of them in the world. It's just hard for her to believe that Ji Hyun is asking her to become his teacher. He also threw up his hands and said that if she agrees to this, then immediately they will sign the contract. Yu Sung Yoon smiled and said that it was all very interesting. So she said that the contract is still valid because it still arouses her genuine interest. Of course, before that, as soon as they assigned the contract, Yu Sung Yoon decided to test his talent. Of course, the main character understood this, which was certain that the Lotus Guild would want to verify his strength. The security guard noticed that the chairman's face changed, and Hyun knew that, in other words, she wanted to test him. But what was required of him? Yu Sung Yun just smiled. So, with a snap of her fingers, a strange autumnal glow appeared behind her, and she said that there was a monocue behind her, and Hyun needed to deal with it. Our protagonist noticed that this is quite a difficult task, because he saw a monocube in front of him. Yu Sung Yun, in turn, said that such a person should be just like that since he signs a contract with Lotus. You need to be able to at least do such a thing. Usually, the mana cube is used for low-level mages. Only 7% will be able to pass it. But will he succeed? He immediately turned to Yu Sung and told her that she looked like she was trying to break him. But Yu Sung said that she wasn't, and even if he lost, the contract would still be signed. 